Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk all about EduBlogs. It is a fantastic blogging site that educators can use for free with their students. So I'm going to walk you through just some of the cool highlights that it has to offer um, so you can get started. So you go to the EduBlog site, you can go ahead and sign yourself up. Um, it will be free for teachers. If you decide to do something for schools or districts, then it becomes more paid. But individual teachers in their classrooms can go ahead and sign right up. I am already signed up with my like demo account here. So I'm going to click on my sites, which is going to take me right to my dashboard. Okay. If I click on um, Smart and WI where I have like my site, this was just one of their templates I chose. And you can see they have all different choices. I'll kind of walk you through those, but this is where I created just my demo site. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, and then you go to your dashboard and once you do that, you can see all kinds of things and connect to your students. And so there's different things that you can do to set up. So within your site, you can start with like the site I just showed you. Um, you can choose your appearance. So that was one of the themes. I picked my own template from there. And it walks you through the different themes. It's all kind of set up for you really nice. You can start from scratch if you want to. You can also choose different colors and backgrounds and all of those extras that you want to put in there. So you can, um, you have magazines, you have popular, newest, all those things. You can go through and pick a theme for your appearance. And that's how I got mine to look. If you look at my site again, that's just one of the themes that I chose from there. It's already pre-done. I didn't have to add a bunch of stuff to it. Within your dashboard, you're going to find all of the different tools that you need for EduBlogs. And if you want to add your students to it, there's two different ways to do that. If your students create their own EduBlogs, so they can go in and just like as a teacher, you can create one, you can click student and students can create one. And then they click join a class. So as a teacher, once you've created your EduBlog, then students will have your, your name for your site and they just add it right in here to search for a site. They can search it, click on it, and then they can add it right in. So they can connect to your site that way. As a teacher, you have a lot of, um, ways that you can kind of control what's in your class and what your students have options for. If you go into create a class, you can set it up specifically for a classroom. So older students, I suggest kind of create their own and then join a class. And then you set up the different regulations within it and you can see all your student work. But if you want to create one just for a class and other students can work within the class blog, click create a class. So you have options here. This is a class blog. Um, this is where you can have students have their own blogs and set it up that way. You can then allow moderation if you want things like who is able to write and, and control all of that. Pol uh, the privacy and you can set up all these different options. So when you create a class, you can pick and choose who can edit, who can add to pages, what students are allowed to do. Um, and so there's different options that you have, which is awesome. So that's either once you have students join your class or you can create a class from there and it's all logged in. So like this is a class blog, everything opens up. And from there, you're able to pick and choose the information that you want students to do, okay? Then, Within EduBlogs, you can choose posts. So if we're gonna click on post, you'll see all of the different posts that you put in. You can title them and then your author go through. What's nice about this is they can be published or not published. So within your categories, you can also categorize your information, organize by date, all of those options are in there. Um, this is one thing that I'm always checking with my students is I have them click on posts because oftentimes students will write it all and forget to publish. And so I will go in then and I can check my student blog and say, hey, you didn't publish that. You need to be able to publish it so other people can see it. So there's different ways that you can check with posts. You can click add new, that sets you up. And then it teaches students how to blog from scratch. It walks them through all of the different steps, like block editor, how you can make them specific to your own, into your own library, um, and all those different options. So students can go ahead and just type right in. And we'll do blog number one. Type in their information. They can see who can see um, and then categories, tags, and you can teach them all about the basics of blogging that way. Also, as you're adding things in, students can learn um, if they're going to set them up for like a portfolio, or if they're going to set them up for like lab reports and things like that. You have all of those different options. So there's a post, the post option or um, the different tools that you have over here on the right hand side that students can work in. Um, they can edit, select different interactions. The plus button, they can go through, they can add quotes, they can go edit images. 
and other media and text. So there's just a lot of different design elements that you can teach students about. If you want to put a two column blog, they can set it up that way. So students have a lot of options when they're creating their blogs as teachers do if you're going to use it for a um, communication tool with parents. If you send home newsletters, you can set all that up in your blog as well. So there's just a lot of different choices and options. And then you just leave the site and we can leave from there. And it takes you right back to where we started. And what's cool is you'll see then, I just had my blog one draft. Um, it has not been published or anything like that. So that is all set up and you can kind of see it from there. Other things that you can do within there, you can, again, add categories or tags. You can keep all of your media. So you have like a media library. And once you create that, it'll have all of the images that you upload. And you're able to add to those regularly. Um, all of your pages, you'll see the different sample pages that you've created. Um, all of those options are there. And then you can go through appearance. So that's where I showed you before the different themes you have options from plugins. Those can be a little bit um, different. I would definitely use those with older students if you're going to activate any plugins with accessibility. Some of them will only be offered for the pro version, so the paid version. But you can kind of pick and choose or at least show students what that would mean for a plugin within a blog. Users, you'll see who is a part of the users that I would be administrator over my classroom. And you can see all of those information there. Settings and links. So everything here is in your dashboard. It's gonna be your setup here and your toolbar along the left-hand side. You have all kinds of options that you can walk your students through. And you can do it as a class, which is always my suggestion that you have your model teacher blog and then you can show students how it works and then connect them through there. I've set up students in several different ways of um, using EduBlog, so where they've had their own blog, and we do kind of just like a daily journal entry. Um, I've used it as a way of communication with parents and the community. Students could also use it for if you have like 20% projects and they need to track all of that information someplace. And it's just a great experience using WordPress, which a lot of students will be exposed to as they kind of move on through life. Um, I definitely think sixth grade through 12th grade are probably the best ages to be using EduBlogs. And again, it's really easy. It walks students through how to do all of the different pieces. And it's all within kind of your control as a teacher, which is nice that you have those settings where you can protect what students are posting. So check out EduBlogs, try it out and see what you can put together with your students. There's so many options.